covering you uh, i am covering you the general tab uh, things okay okay so firewall name it's a firewall name comments yeah. it's a comments firewall type there's a three firewall type static backend dynamic backend and loopback right the actual backend information will come once you select the static backend i will ask you the remote host and port mm-hmm. otherwise it won't ask you okay and if your backend is going to be ssl the secure thing then you have to configure that ssl here in forward crypto profile okay that is what it says forward but you are going to call you you are going to configure your uh, um Yes, sir. For the backend, okay. so that means the backend server is expecting SSL encryption. So any client, uh, the data power makes a connection between data power and the backend needs to be SSL enabled. Yes, that's what the forward means. Yeah. Okay, because I was confused because uh, the front end could also be SSL, right? But this is the reverse one. So forward means forward, reverse means reverse. Yeah, forward means yes. Okay. Okay, a little confusing, but okay, that's fine. if you see the reverse crypto profile which means uh, if you want to enable your data power as ssl and mm-hmm. the client who is going to call the data power with security secure certificate then you have to configure that thing here that is reverse that's reverse yes okay. and can you please uh, in uh, I, i maybe you will cover later on but uh, explain how does this ssl works because i i've always have some hard time to understand how it actually yeah, works or i will i will cover you but just i'm giving you the heads up about what is what okay okay that's fine yeah so go up and you can see the next tab some other tabs uh, so okay the main thing is i am i am not covering here the xml manager mm-hmm. which is very very important one as of now we you are using the uh, default xml manager but actually um, actually in the uh, organization you need to create xml man- the, the specific xml manager for each firewall type or services you are going to create so based on your service uh, non functional requirement so what would be the expectation of uh, messages uh, per second you are expecting and the what will be the ip addresses and all those things basically you can create a pl- click the plus sign if you see a lot of things on xml manager click on the plus sign which means you are going to create xml manager but okay. don't create it just click it will uh, you can see all the things uh, so you have to create a xml manager specific to your particular firewall or particular service based on end of course Okay, so if I have a web service proxy, I have to create an XML manager specifically for that, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Basically, okay. it's based on the non-functional requirement of the particular web service proxy or particular multi-protocol gateway or particular XML firewall. Okay. Okay. Which has lot of things inside XML parser and document cache, extension functions, cache policy, which are all a uh, lot of tabs, uh, which are going to be cover you a non-functional. for example here you can see the default uh, go to xml parser if you see by default xml bytes needs to be scanned and the xml element dev and xml attribute count uh, which are all by default you can change if you want you can reduce it if you want your service does not do not want to uh, uh, you, you are expecting only 10 xml uh, or 20 50 xml elements in dev then you can specify that to avoid uh, more xml elements to coming to your services so you can improve the performance here and attribute count maximum node size and everything for example namespace prefix everything you can able to mention here what is an xml manager by the way xml manager is the kind of uh, handling your all xml messages Okay. How you can able to uh, handle all your incoming requests, XML requests and messages, and uh, that's okay. what we are going to mention here. Okay. That's it. Uh, go go ta- go up. Close this. No no. no. There are some more tabs you can able to oh, document cache, which means the uh, what is the document cache count. Um, what should be the cache size uh, these are all things you can able to configure the 
cash policy and everything time if you see the cash policy ttl means time to live and how how long you want to cast the particular uh, response request and response for that for example if same kind of request and response is coming you want to cast that instead of calling the back and you can able to cast the response that's what you can able to do it here so this is really the messages then inbound outbound messages right the physical soap message coming in or soap message okay. coming out right. okay the schema validation rules if you want to validate the schema validation rules and processing rules and a lot of things there is here in xml so basically xml manager is the one uh, very very important one is basically the service specific one you have to create okay 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 close that window the next thing is processing policy which means uh, each service uh each uh, each service have one at least one pro uh, each service have one processing policy but one processing policy can have multiple rules if you click edit button i will show you so this is the processing policy name and you have a default rule called request rule but you can create a many more rule what how many rules you want to create you can create as many rule here each uh, each rule can have multiple accents for example equal sign is matching accent and the uh, left arrow is uh, a result accent and there's lot of accents on top of that you can drag and drop the accents and you can able to create the you can able to create the policy based on the accents you are dragging and drop here so one service can have multiple policy no one service can have one policy xml firewall can have one one service can have one policy okay and each policy can have multiple rules and each okay. rule can have multiple operations multiple actions okay now in this case we only have one rule client to one, one request tool on response tool seems to be have okay so there is three types of rule one is the request to uh, client to service called request rule and server to client is called response rule if you want a rule to be executed on both direction then it's a, it's a both okay so basically if you say a client to server it's going to be executed the request request time if you say server to client it's going to be executed based on the response time if you say both the rule will be executed based on the um, based on the both request time and response time as well so here when it says client to server that means server is the data power now and client is client, is the client is the data power okay no 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 um, yes client is the data power yes now then how the uh, so then who is the server server is the back end okay okay so that means uh, here the rule direct yeah, so um, okay so but the request was made by the real client right like like a uh, soap ui client that yeah, is the one who client but the soap ui client calls the data power then data power needs to call the back end right At right the time for the back end data power will the client okay so here client to server really is when the the request which came from soap ui yes that request now gets uh transform into this uh rule name whatever and that's the this little confusing here right cuz when it is confusion client you can you can forget about the data for at least now so okay. you can see the client is your soap soap ui okay. and the server is the back end actual web service server mm -hmm. so you, you want to execute some policy based on the request going from the uh, client to server so you can able to determine set up the policy here okay so okay so there is no so data power is not in the picture here data power is a gateway it's going to be a execute uh, based on the rule request what you want you want to do some transformation between before you going before uh, data power call the back and you want to do some transformation or you want to do a json to xml conversion a uh, couple of things you want to do before calling the back and you want to do a data power uh, has to uh, handle all those things that's what the request policy once okay. once request comes from the client the data power this is the request then the 
corresponding rule will be executed once the rules completed then data power will call the backend so backend is the server here and uh, client is the soap ui yes And you said one rule can you can have multiple rules and the, and one rule can have um, collection of actions, right? Yes. So in the order of in, in which order your uh, for example for each request for the one request you can have a multiple request rules, but the 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 rule will be executed in the order and the conditions. Uh, for example, the order of the first it will match it. First, the order, the rule will be executed executed based on the order. Below, you can see the order. Here, this one, right? Yeah, based on the order, but it's a request and response rule, but it's totally different rules. That is makes sense. But if you have a same kind of request rule, we will see that example actually. Okay, so if I click on response, it will show me the response here, right? Server yes. sending the client. Okay. Nancy, 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 ka? close the bridge. Don't do it. No. Okay. Yeah. So this is the processing policy and close the tab. This, this uh, window, right? Yes. So these are the basically two important things, XML manager and processing policy, right? Yes. Very important. Okay. In the URL rewrite policy, <clears throat> if you want to rewrite the URL, we can do it, but we are not going to use it. And front end, which means which data power IP are going to use the particular IP for the IP and port for the particular service. And the reverse means I told you it's going to be accessible between the client and data power. Mm -hmm. The request type, there is various request type is there. You can able to choose which request type you're, you're trying to expect. From the client. So, who assigns this IP and port number? Usually, basically the, yeah, basically the admin guy will assign the IP, and the developer will use the IP and uh, <clears throat> develop the ports. Okay, so the front end, uh, uh, front end would be somebody who is calling the data power, right? Yes. Like SOAP UI. So, in this case, uh, uh, the port number. And the uh, IP address that is for the data power. Yes. These are the data power. So the network guy, uh, usually this is the box, right? So the box should have an IP address based on DNS and the way we configured it, right? Yes. But when we started but, them. But it has the four IP address, right? So they will allocate yes. the one IP address for inbound, the one IP address for outbound, and uh, as I told you, like kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and based on DMG or not all that, right? Yes. Where where it is located? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, go up. So that's advanced tab. You can able to select here, and you can able to see HTTP timeout and TCP timeout and persistence scan enable and Rewrite host, disallow get method, lot of things. We will see that. And stale street parameters is the next tab, and headers, monitors, XML thread production. It's all the tabs. Um, but we really don't use this, this one. Basically, we might use monitors or uh, even not monitor here. XML thread production is the one we can able to use it. What does this mean? XML thread production is the one where you can able to specify the um, you can able to make your service which is uh, which is being attacked from the XML attack, like uh, maximum message size and uh, denial of service. Basically, the um, multiple message of, for example, uh, and the user will use the XML and uh, trying to. Uh, 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 create the big size of XML and uh, sending to you 
calling the service to uh, to uh, make the data power uh, put the data on a heavy load to process that so basically that kind of attacks you can able to uh, you can able to uh, uh, block here so that means if some hacker can just uh, take a, what do you call xml message and uh, create an xml message and start firing like millions of transactions something like that yeah is that what is xml attack yeah that that's two as criminal attack one is one is what you said that's the one way and the second way is they can able to create a very large xml message for example if you say the address is unbounded in the schema which means you can the, you can accept any number of address but actually it doesn't need it for more than two or three address but they can create a million address elements in the xml type which is a very big xml they can able to hit you that then data mm. will pass that message as it, it will be attacked right mm. so both both type of attacks you can able to resolve here more like service based not like uh, fire, uh, in case of a web you come through the web no. server and not that type of attack this is different no this is service based right service based yes Okay, go. Okay, now we will uh, we will little bit deep dive into the uh, policies. Uh, go to the general tab. Uh, uh, edit the policy. So this policy was created by the wizard, right? We didn't create it. Yes, this automatically for XML firewall it will be automatically created, but other firewalls we have to create it manually. Okay, like web service and MPG. Yes. Those ones. Okay, we have to create them. Okay. Now what we have we can able to do. Uh, Hold on, let me check if I have something, okay? Okay. 